And good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for another edition of Tune In Tomorrow. I'm your host, Richard Sims, the executive editor of Soaps in Depth magazine. And we have a very, 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 very special show tonight. And I'm extremely excited about this for a whole lot of reasons, not the least of which is I've been telling you guys for weeks that I've been trying to set this up. And finally, it has come together. Uh, and and so for that reason alone, I'm excited. But as if that wasn't enough, I have two very, very special guests with me tonight. One is the creator of what has to be my very, very favorite web soap, a show that I personally think needs to be put on um, television immediately. They have awesome production values and just an amazing cast. And speaking of the amazing cast, the other person we have with us tonight happens to not only be one of his stars and muses, but also someone that all of you, every single last one of you, know and love. Uh, so without further interruption, ado, or anything else, Allow me to bring on and introduce to you Steve Silverman, the creator and like head honcho and everything else of Pretty the Series, uh, which can be found at prettytheseries.com, and Denise Alexander, who many of you will remember as Dr. Leslie Weber on General Hospital, who was, I'm going to admit it, she was my first gay boy crush. That's Ooh. right. That's right. <laughs> Steve, Denise, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I'm overwhelmed. Thank Thank you, thank you. So, Steve, tell everybody, share with everybody who might not know the very, very, very exciting news that you got earlier this week. I'm pregnant? No. Um. (laughs) He's weird, yes. I'm, he's weird, yes. It's been a very busy, exciting week for the uh, the pretty team. We um, uh, last Wednesday we took home well took home. We we have three nominations with the IAW TV awards, um, including best comedy. Um, we picked up a best writing and a best directing. And just as exciting, uh, yesterday we picked up thirteen. Indie Soap Award nominations, making us the most nominated web series at the Indie Soap Awards. And, um, and it's very, very exciting, and we're thrilled beyond belief. And um, I wish I could say that Denise was one of the um, nominees. But he heard. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Jeez, what a pal. Denise, Denise, in my heart, is a nominee always, and a winner. Aww. That doesn't what were, help, what were, your, what were your main nominations, Steve? We, it's crazy. Um, everything. Everything. <laughs> we, we're, up, we're up for Is that a category? Best? Is that a category best I everything? Think it, it should, they should have just done that. They would have saved time. Um, we're up for best comedy. We're up for best writing, best directing. Uh, Sam Pancake for actor. Stacey McQueen for actress. D. Freeman and Jeannie Francis, both for supporting Michael Taylor Gray for supporting the cast for ensemble. We're up for music. It, it's it's nuts and it's crazy and it's there's more and and we're just thrilled and we're honored. We had um we had seven nominations last year and we won two. Um, actually, we only won one. One was a I knew in advance we were winning. It was a an editor's choice award for music. We won it for Gumdrop the Unicorn which I wrote in five minutes, and my brother wrote the music in four minutes. So um, uh, the lesson learned is to not spend a lot of time on things and win awards. I don't know. That's it. (laughs) I would think, you know, from what I understand, it looks like a lot of people in the daytime community are paying attention to that because they don't seem to be looking, spending a whole lot of time on um, storylines and stuff. Denise, tell people, well, well, first of all, both of you, kind of, for those listeners who have not been here to, oh, oh look, I heard the music again. That's awesome. For those for those listeners who may not have listened to me as I've repeatedly demanded that they watch your show, fill them in a little bit on on what the show is. You're in season three now. And um, just give them like a little bit of insight into the mind behind the people on Pretty. Well, that's, well, that's Stephen Silverman. There's no question. 
Um, he is weird. He is wonderful. I say that in hopes I will get more lines next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when pe uh, well, if you haven't watched the show, uh, Pretty is. I say that if toddlers and Tierras and The Office had an illegitimate baby, it would be Pretty. And basically, the way I always sum it up is Michael Champagne wants to see his five-year-old daughter win the Miss Star Ice pageant, and his five-year-old daughter is played by a 35-year-old actress. And I have been fortunate in the last two years to work with some incredible people, including Denise, and it's just a very quirky, fun, um, incredibly politically incorrect show, and I think Denise can go on about um, my past with that and my love of that, uh, and I'll let her <laughs> take over about how everything I always do is in politically incorrect for some reason. Well, the first thing I ever did with Stephen, the first time I got to know Stephen, he, um, I tell this story with great affection and delight in tormenting him. Um, he was a kid. He was like 12 and a half or 20 or something. And he'd just gotten out of, I shouldn't tease him that much. Now I feel terrible. Now I'm guilty. I'm having guilt from this show. I'm having grief because I didn't get nominated. I don't know why I'm putting myself through this. Oh, yes, I'm making so much money. That's why. Um, I, he, was a, he had been an intern at General Hospital after I left there. I never knew him there. And I got a call from him about the script he had written. And you never want to crush anybody's hopes when they're just starting out. But, you know, you don't necessarily want to read everything everybody sends to you, and particularly not somebody who just got out of college in Arizona and is just in town learning what the what – the, entertainment industry is all about, but something wonderful stepped in and got into my thinking, and I said, well, let me read it, and I fell in love with it, and I gave it to my husband, who is a, was a preeminent television uh, director, and had come out of theater and basically had such wonderful insights, and uh, he finished reading it, and I said, did you like it? And he said, it's delightful. It has something to offend everyone. And it really did. It was a wonderful comedy. It was, um, can I tell the story of it, Steve? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it was called Mother's Day, and it was a very wacko family, which was really not all that loosely based on Stephen's family and close family friends, who every year on the mother's birthday gather at the family's home. And the son has gone off to California and comes back, and has been trying for years to come out to his parents and has really kind of targeted the trip home and never can because his sister is such a, such a nutcase, really, gorgeous, but really strange. And every year would come home with something new, like she had joined the circus or she had run off with the Israeli <laughs> army. Or, But this year he's determined that he's going, this is going to be the year. And um, the family is, uh, she's a, she is Stephen's adorable mother, absolutely. And the dad was a, a wonderful kind of stolid, lovely, dear-hearted fellow whose main passion in life was the very small lawn that came with their uh, property. And he, there were two crazy aunts and the gentleman who kind of had a little something to do with either of them, very mature. And the sister does come home this year. Can, and 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 the kid is just he's he's going to this is going to be his year she's not going to take over she comes over she sorry she comes home to tell the parents that she has fallen in love with a catholic priest this is a jewish family <laughs> from new jersey and has become a nun and he is coming home to meet them and he's black <laughs> Well, the kid doesn't have a chance. So it is the unfolding of that. And it was, to me, uh, Stephen's writing makes me laugh. I sit there and laugh until tears are pouring down my face. I just find his writing to be hysterically funny. And very, lo very long story of me saying, no, I can't do it. No, I don't have the time. No, I may be doing 12 other things. I wound up doing this play. And... There have been times when he has written things. I see everything that he does. He has often sent me things to say, what do you think? And I've even worked with him in a few, num 
I can't, obviously, I've been drinking too much tonight. I cannot even speak. Um, you and me he, both. <laughs> what? what you, you and me say? both. Oh, 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 okay. Um, the, the thing is that's scary is I don't drink, and I sound like this. Um, when he would send me some of them, I would think, how do I say this to him? It, it, kind of not my thing, but I believe in his talent enough that I believe there's audience out there. And when he first told me about Pretty, and I can't remember if he sent me something to read or just told me about it, I said the same thing to him. I said, I'm not your audience. I thought that was a nice way of putting, I don't get this and I don't think I like it. And <laughs> But I had such faith in him and his ability and his knowledge of what people will find funny that I also told him I felt his audience was out there and he would find them. So I didn't wind up being involved the first year. The second year, I'm, the second season, I shouldn't say year, I guess. The second season, for some reason, he came back to me and said, oh, I know what it was. Um, I think he had written something with an eye toward a mother-daughter teaming and had kind of as a, a wish list, it would be me and Jeannie. And Jeannie was simply, she was on the other side of the country for the summer and couldn't do it. And so he sort of kept my character, and I came in and did a few small scenes. And all of a sudden, this is the most, this is the funniest, most delicious thing I've ever read. It's bizarre. It's outside of my ken. It's outside of anything that I've ever done in comedy or anything else. It's strange. It's kind of twisted. It's bizarre. And it um, is, as I've seen a number of reviewers say at times even, I'm going to use the O word again. I'm sure somebody along the way there said offensive. But it was wonderful. I couldn't get enough of it. I only had those few scenes. I wanted to do more. I didn't want to leave those people. And so the third season, I came back again. I practically would have begged him to take me back, but fortunately he did it on his own, so I'm very pleased. I'd like to point out that she liked it very much, but then it was incredible once she was involved. <laughs> well, it does kind of work that way. <laughs> we have known, it's very funny because we just had a conversation about this recently, Denise and I, which is that I think that, um, can I say this here, Denise? I yes, think absolutely. That we, I think that we met exactly when oh, we were... Oh, no, 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 I didn't know you were going to say that. Oh. Well, didn't no. say, what is it you want to say? A long time. No. It was just a long time ago. A really no, that's long all time ago. no, no, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to get years. I'm just saying, we met exactly when we both were destined to meet. Oh, and, that, yes. And we both, and we kind of um, creatively, as two creative people, sort of bridged a gap for each other. And, mm -hmm. um, and we've had so much fun over the years doing different projects. But I will tell you, it's wonderful because every time I send Denise anything, she goes, "Huh? What?" And then, <laughs> and then she sees it, and then she's like, "I love this. I need this. Yes, I'll be a part of this." Um, and there was no, there was never a question. I mean, when we did the very first season of Pretty, um, I, I wrote it specifically in mind for these six original characters, and really, it just came down to budget and time. We only had enough money. I, we were paying for this out of our own pocket, and so we only had enough money to do four days of shooting to create five episodes. And then the second season is when our fans stepped in, and I love our fans. They helped fund the second season, and we were able to um, do a lot more and bring a lot more actors on because it could pay more people, even though, you know, God bless all of you, the, the, we paid minimum, minimum wage here at the Wonderful World of Pretty. Um, and then the third season is 100% fan-funded. And and to me, that has been the, the greatest sign of this journey, that the fans wanted more. And they started throwing money at us through our PayPal account, which is located at prettytheseries.com. Please, don't be shy. Um, they started throwing money at us. I didn't even, had a, I didn't even have a, writ, a script written yet. And so it's, it's been a, quite a fantastical journey um, uh, in, in how it's all gone. And, and yes, it is... Um, it, I just said this to Denise earlier today because we were talking. I will keep doing any project I work on. I will keep doing it as long as it's fun and pretty remains to be fun. So as long as pretty remains fun, 
you'll still keep getting new episodes. When Pretty's not fun anymore, I know it's time to move on.